Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Okay, today we are going to continue our power supply design series. This is uh, number four. Um, this is toroid meets diodes or rectifier diodes. We're going to show um, how we turn AC into DC. So that's what we're going to do. Let's do it. All right. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this series, give me a thumbs up. Okay, thanks. Alright, back to our power supply, uh, input power cord, uh, the switch, the fuse, thermistor, into our primary uh, circuit, our, our, uh, it's a, this transformer has two secondaries, I'll show you those real quick here, and uh, so that's our primary loop, that's our current loop on the primary. Secondary, we have two uh, transform or two windings, right, and they're labeled black, red, orange, yellow. And the black and orange have the dots in reference to the dots on this side. Okay. So what I've done, and I hope you can see this, it's in pencil here. But I've, what I've done is I've drawn one of the output circuits, one of the methods you can use to get a DC output. So you connect your black to a diode, the anode of a diode. You tie your yellow to a diode and you take your orange and red and your center tap you'd call that a center tap just time together as if it's a, a center tap okay so you treat that just like a center tap transformer and you call that your V minus okay so as a waveform you know if you imagine the waveform going like this on the black side it's on the yellow it's opposite because this is a dot and this is the opposite of a dot so as waveform goes positive and minus here it's going minus and then positive so when it's going positive on this waveform on this output this uh, this diode is reverse bias so it doesn't does not turn on so you get this little pulse I showed here is a B and then and then when it goes negative this diode does not conduct so it just flat lines and then the opposite down here it flat lines during when this is positive, but when the waveform uh, swings back around where the it's positive down here, then the yellow uh, gets a positive pulse. And so what you get on the output of these two diodes when you tie them together is you get a pulse from the black and then a pulse from the yellow and so on and so on. That's called pulsating DC voltage. Looks kind of like a sign wave because it's half of a sine wave but it does not go negative so it's a it's a pulsating DC voltage at that point and then what we do is we use filter capacitors big old bulk capacitors out here to smooth that off right so what I'm going to do is show you the transformer and the setup and then we're going to look at the scope all right let's do it all right so this is the transformer that we're using and there's the wiring, blue, gray, one primary, the other one's violet, brown. Blue and violet have the dots. On the secondary, we have a black, red, black with the dot, and orange, yellow, orange with the dot. Okay, so that was the diagram I showed. 250 VA, 50 to 60 hertz. And uh, the output says 25 volts at 5 amps, each winding, 25 volts at 5 amps, each winding has that. Alright, so here's the, here's the input, we come through the power cord here, and then black wire coming over here to the switch, and then from the switch to the fuse, and then to the blue and uh, violet wires, and then we come out of those wires, with the gray and brown, and there's the thermistor. Okay, there's the the infamous or the famous thermistor SL22. It's a 10 ohm until it gets hot, and then that goes back to the red wire, back to the power cord here. Okay, then I'm going to use this 8 ohm resistor on the load on the output, just as a as a load, and I'll and I'll take off the load and show you why I have it there, but um, okay, so what we've done is the black and yellow wire 
they go through the diodes like I showed on the schematic and they come together and a red wire comes off. That's the plus output and the center tap I'm calling it, the red and orange wire, they come together to the black and I'm just going to put that on the scope and right here on the load. I'm going to have to hook that up here to the load. Alrighty, so here let me go ahead and do that again. They kind of pop loose on me. Alright, so I've got the load connected here to the output, the red and black wire, and I've got the scope across there. And so we'll look at the voltage waveform here on the scope tip. See over here on the side of the screen. And then I'll have this, uh, this little astro meter reading the voltage too. I'll probably prop it up next to the scope so you can watch that along with the waveforms. Alright, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we're all ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip the switch on right here. Kind of see it in the screen there. I just flip this over, and there we go. We got 22 volts, and you can see the screen here. I've got now the scope saying it's 24, well, almost 25 volts RMS, and 36 volts peak, 37 volts peak to peak. It says, but all right, and the RMS or the meter here it's in DC setting. So it's 22.89 or 22.9 volts. We're getting two diode drops of about 0.7 volts each. So we get about 1.4 volt drop. So it should be closer to 25 is what the uh, transformer says. And that's about what it is. Okay, now watch what happens when I remove um, the load, okay? Now you see how the the waveform is not quite hitting zero, it's kind of floating. So when you don't have a load on the output, it just kind of floats around a little bit. Um, there's nowhere for current to go through the diodes and so they, they kind of float just a little bit. So when I touch the load down, you can see how it just brings it right down to the reference point, back down to re to the zero voltage point and it brings peaks down it brings the whole waveform down so when it's floating kind of looks like that all right and i'm gonna go ahead and hit this switch turn it off okay so this is uh the diode series i was using and it's uh from diodes incorporated this one says it's no longer recommended for new design this series here okay it's been around for a long time. I'm not sure if that's because they just don't want to make it or it says I actually use this series here, the S3A, the S3M. So, um, but let's go ahead and look and I want to just show you some of the, the things you want to look out for on the diode. Now, one thing is voltage rating very important right pretty much voltage rating and current rating would be the two obvious things you want to look for and you can see this series starts with 50 volts and goes all the way up to 1000 i was ha uh, just happened to be using this 400 volt um, here in the states with 120 volts uh, if that's rms so if you look at the peak uh, voltage that's about say 170 and if you say plus 10% tolerance for normal voltage. Maybe that's 187, somewhere around there. Uh, but you know what, you can have transients and swells in your voltage too, right? So even if you didn't, you'd wanna have at least a minimum of 200 volts reverse. So when that diode gets reversed biased by that low, you know, that negative swing, you wanna make sure that diode's turned off. But like I say, you're gonna get swells and so on. So you want to really have 400 volts as your next option so really 400 and it's quite common to use six or eight hundred um, you don't really lose anything because your uh, forward voltage that's another important parameter besides the current voltage but the forward voltage this is I forward at three amps so going back to the current it's rated at three amps that's um, that's average rectified output current okay so they rate the forward voltage drop at three amps is about one volt. So that's about one volt max. Um, 
we have some curves in here that we can look at see what it is in other currents but um, so you get about one volt drop um, if this one volt went higher sometimes it does with higher voltage diodes then maybe you don't want to just automatically go to a high voltage diode but it looks like all these other parameters except for capacitance changes um, the capacitance changes at 400 from 4 to 600 the capacitance actually goes down and I believe that's because internally in the diode they've got an extra layer it's like having two diodes in series and so the capacitance drops which is interesting because the forward voltage doesn't show it goes up um, now here's the other important thing so if one thing you want to make sure you got the voltage you got to have the voltage you got to have the current and then the and then things that just kind of fall in place is a forward voltage drop that's gonna give you a power drop across your diode so imagine one volt with three amps that's three watts that seems like a lot of power for this um, for this small part right so if you the next important thing when you think about power is this resistance junction to ambient that's the junction of the semiconductor to the ambient air and that's 15 degrees C per watt if you have um, you know three watts if you have three amps times one volt three watts and then so multiply 15 you get how much temperature that's 45 degree rise that's in Celsius so that's pretty hot okay so when we come down here okay so the oh okay so the current is going up here and the voltage is across here so you see the one volt right here comes up to about it shows about 10 amps that's instantaneous so that's not average once it heats up it drops down when you first have the inrush current you're gonna get you know you can have a lot of current but your voltage drops gonna be a little bit lower okay so on on these diodes a lot of times you see this capacitance thing and reverse voltage uh, when the diodes turn off it looks like a capacitor so this tells you how many picofarads at 60 Hertz at low frequencies uh, this capacitance usually isn't an issue at higher frequencies it can be an issue because you have to charge and discharge that capacitor so if we come back up here to the table non-repetitive peak forward surge current 200 amps so that's what we saw on the table there and here's that peak reverse current you have the diode actually leaks it's not totally turned off it leaks microamps of current because it has it's like a capacitor so it leaks a little bit so when you're looking at this peak forward surge current you can see one this is the number of cycles and this is peak surge current one cycle 200 amps that's what the table said now look you can go say 10 cycles what if you're charging you know a big bank capacitors or whatever and it takes a while to charge that up uh, maybe motors that are starting up it says you can go up to 100 amps in 10 cycles but now this is all based on the junction not changing uh, temperature this is 25 C so this is extreme maximum this is not realistic because as soon as current goes in there you're gonna have that voltage drop you're gonna have heat and things are gonna heat up and so you know this is just your maximums okay that's why you always want to derate things so for our audio you know for our audio amplifier whatever this unless it's a low power amplifier this is you know probably not the rectifiers we want but it's something just for me to demonstrate low power you know if you're drawing one amp continuous uh, I think that's good you know I think I would derate that current by 50 percent okay so I hope looking at the data sheet kind of helps and uh, let me know if there's other things you want me to point out and if if I'm showing enough data in these data sheets uh, thanks guys